Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the Morning Toast. Happy Wednesday. Tuesday. Oh my God, what a slow Getting fucking Getting ahead week. of yourself because if it were Wednesday, it would be my birthday. And if it were Wednesday, I would be humping everyone because it's hump day. But it's only Tuesday. And you know what? This is going to be a great week, obviously, because it's my birthday. It's a short week for you, which means we're changing things up for the toast. So it's a it's a fun and diverse week. And I think it's going to be great. We have Jack Vanek or Jack Vanek. I like Vanek. I say Vanek. Is I that like, right? I think for me, it just rolls off the tongue easier. But she's coming on the show later today. And I am so excited. We're going to complete the Lady Gang trifecta. Mm -hmm. And also, when we went on Lady Gang, I realized that I am a Jack. Really? Yeah, just like her energy, I I think I relate most to Jack. Well, Becca wasn't there. I think I'm Jack with like a sprinkle of a Becca and a sprinkle of a Kelty, but I think I'm predominantly Jack. Well, Becca wasn't there, so I didn't really get to like experience their whole vibe in person, so I don't know who I am. You're Kelty. Am I? Yeah. Why? Yeah. yeah. Just because she talks the most? And just like the most energy, energetic, like fun, spunky Kelty. Yeah. But we didn't get to see Becca in action. Yeah, you know? and so like, where does Becca fall in when it's the three of them? And I'm you maybe know, I'm a Becca. Glee, and I'm just getting to the episodes where Becca is in, and it's just so crazy. I'm like, I know her, you yeah. know. And she like, she didn't get enough lines. She Agreed. didn't get enough time. Agreed. We never delved into Kitty's storyline. Like, what made her want to make Marnie think she was fat? That was so evil. Who like, hurt her? No, totally. I want to like, know the way she used to talk about Marnie's mom, who was like the overweight lunch, lunch lady. Like, it was so mean. Like, watching Carmel. back these episodes, it's like. It's so painful to watch, like, them be so mean to her. That was really, really terrible. Yeah. But who hurt you, Kitty? No, literally. Like, that evil just doesn't come from anywhere. Like, it's learned. Right. So we could have explored that maybe on the Glee reboot, which will inevitably come soon because all we do is reboots. You mean the Glee boot? The Glee boot. <laughs> mm-hmm. The snitch is here on the snitch cam. And so is the snatch. And so is the snatch. She dropped her new episode of The Snatchler today. It's been a while. You, have, you took maybe, like, a month hiatus ever since the Bachelor series ever actually since, ended. Yeah, because I just, like, didn't really know what to do do with it after but then I saw that the demand was high and you know I just have to answer I just do you answer people, the call I so, do what the people tell me and, and now and now it's just a basic this is why we got the boot from the snatch like, yeah um oh totally and now it's just basically a podcast like about my life and and also the bachelor but yeah so I recorded it yesterday and you have a big update on your status m- on the status the of my life of my job here at the toast and i'm not gonna tell you here because i want you to go listen to the snatcher yes clickbait that shit margo yes snatcher making moves and now it's a personal podcast that like if you ever want to know what the snitch does after the show which we all want to know um now listen to the podcast to and there were so many really cute moments with her and her roommate where they talk about how they're just like living the life and they come home to their apartment <laughs> and they're just like so happy because they love their apartment Aww, and they like put cry. on a song they put on they were like some people come to their apartment and they like have a glass of wine and they text their ex she was like we come home we put on a song that we love and we dance around the living room and we're just like we love it here Margo. How crazy it was is that? so cute. literally one night at 4 a.m this is like after a night out we were so drunk and we got home we played homecoming queen six times on repeat hey, and just like coming enjoyed it that's so nice and like that's the stuff we want to hear from you just yeah. being like young in the city this podcast isn't going to be for all the people who listen to this podcast because you are like younger living a younger life you're our gen z correspondent like you you're are. our tiktok correspondent yeah. yeah i'm trying to like build a new audience now oh just, oh she thinks she's too good for us no that's no, what you said that's, that's what, what i said, you said i should do because I'm just listening Excuse to my me. boss. You should be so honored to have our audience. The toasters are no, everything. Of course. Jackie, Snitch, I hear you. I'm because just doing what she told she's me. She's talking to. about like college and things that like no, college age and you know what, Claude, like we could stand to have a younger audience so here. So you're saying we're too old? No, I'm saying we want to get everyone. We need to cast a wide neck. And that's what we're doing at TNN. That is what we're doing. And we believe in young, brilliant talent. talent. We Thank do. You. <laughs> we also believe in Southern Talent, Raven and Adam's new show, Date Night with Raven and Adam. We is believe in Southern Talent. On here. Spotify and iTunes. Check it out. The reviews are in and they're rave. Raven has the most The reviews are, are in, in and they're Raven. Raven. <laughs> um she's the most wonderful vo- voice for podcasting. It's southern and smooth and she's so funny and it's a really great show they have a great dynamic so if you're a single toaster snooking for love in all the wrong places check it out speaking of snooking for love i watched um (laughs) mike sorrentino and lauren sorrentino's laurentino um their 20 minute wedding video last Mm -hmm. night they got married at like a beautiful castle in new jersey i never heard of it it was actually like kind of emotional it was really beautiful because you were i remember like he's going to prison right and he was just like it was almost like bittersweet like he looked kind of sad the whole time but like in a happy way i want to say um it was really nice and it was cool they put in a lot of snippets of Vinny and Polly's speeches oh that's cool Vinny, Polly, and Ronnie were groomsmen and they only had four groomsmen and they were three out of four like it's crazy how these kids have really been friends for so no, long they, and that like this show gave them a family yeah you know like they're not just co- co-workers yeah. like their family yeah it's really sweet it was a good video 
Glad to hear it. We're going to recap Dancing with the Stars at the end of this episode, along with anything else we need to recap? Ooh. No, only Dancing with the Stars well, was on last night. I watched a new Netflix movie last night. I think it's going to be all the rave. It's called Holiday in the Wild mm-hmm. with um, Kristen Davis from Sex and the City and, and Rob, Rob Lowe. Lowe. Oh my God, okay. I watched a press junket that they did. They have literally no chemistry. Like, it was so awkward. Like, the person asking them, like, what are your plans for the holidays? Like, in your real home. And Rob Lowe was like, you know, it's all about the tree and the singing. And Kristen Davis was like, well, I'm Southern and we love to... Bake. It was just like the two could not have less in common, less chemistry. It was just like you would never know they spent the last three months together uh, filming a movie. Well, they're great actors because I would never know. And it's a really great movie. Just so many different elements to it. And just like I think you'll really like it because um, there's a lot of elephants. And Justice for elephants. You should go watch like, the documentary An Apology to Elephants. You should go watch the documentary. And just we need to be doing more to conserve the elephant population. I don't know. I agree. And at the end of the movie, they say that. <gasps> oh, wait. That actually, you know, that makes a lot of sense. Um, when I used to be an intern, Kristen Davis came in for an interview. And her whole platform, like after Sex and the City, is all about saving elephants. She does these, like, trips to Africa. Well, she literally did a movie to save elephants. That's uh, presumably. She doesn't really need to work. I guess that's why she did that sad Netflix movie. Because they agreed to help her shatter it. It wasn't sad. It was really beautiful. Okay. I'm pretty sure they filmed on location in Africa because I don't think those were green She's screens. She's always in Africa. And it was beautiful, like just masterful scenery. Okay. Loved it. And he's really cute, Rob Lowe. He is. I don't know if I mentioned this a time or 20, but I did go to the roast of Rob Lowe, Comedy Central, a couple years ago. It's where I met Pete Davidson. Um, such a good old time, you know, and I was sitting all the way in the back, but I really got the sense that Rob Lowe was like this mature, handsome man, you know, except didn't he have sex with like a six year old or something? I've never heard that. No, that's what all the jokes were. He, had, he did it like have sex with a teenager. Maybe I've never he just like dates younger women no no it was like a whole scandal margaret can you google it like i think there was a sex tape no like that. no please don't because like we need more context yeah, i'm that's what we need the context for okay there were everyone's making jokes about it at the roast okay that's I, I don't know if i told you i am um, you were i there. went to the roast yeah wait you were at that roast mm-hmm, like in the audience and i was on the red carpet too hosting corresponding mm-hmm. very very cool i also did get my picture taken if you google it, it is one of the first pictures that come up i look like a baked potato because i'm wrapped in tinfoil i'm wearing like the silver metallic jacket it's such a terrible call baked potatoes are so good mm-hmm. In 1988, Rob Lowe was involved in a scandal over a videotape of him having sex with two females, one of whom was 16. Thank you. Well, you just ruined the movie for me. Thank you. But you already watched it, so it couldn't be ruined. Um, And it was good. And I would recommend it. And it's the perfect sort of like Netflix movie. It's just like falling in love. You know, it, it, it got me through three hours of my life. Yeah. And, it, and where I was intermittent fasting and I couldn't eat. And it distracted me from falling eating. Falling in love was honestly like one of the worst movies of this year. Like so terrible. Not terrible. No. No, it was it wasn't great, but it wasn't terrible. It was terrible. It was, it was terrible. It was. It's not sure. It was terrible. He was great. She was um, not. We have Jack Van X, so we we got to get through. Yeah, we got to get through. So usually the snitch just lets us know when it's time, but I guess she's like she's busy on that snatchler high. Usually you ask me if it's time. Okay. Is it time? Is it time? It's time. Well, it's time for the past five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. <laughs> And it is, but I have to share a personal anecdote about one of our sponsors, because as you know, well, actually you might not know, today's episode is brought to you by Noom, the habit-changing solution that helps users learn to develop a new relationship with food through personalized courses. It's based in psychology. They'll teach you why you do the things you do and arms you with the tools to break the bad habits and replace them with better ones. Um, So yesterday I went to the doctor just for like a checkup, you know, I was getting my blood pressure and I was telling her, um, and actually she told me I was just like a little overweight and I was like, thanks doc. Um, (laughs) Thanks doc. I was just telling her how like I... Like, I will never lose weight. Like, that's, like, my thing. Like, I just can't. Like, she's, like, I could put together, like, a... And I'm, like, honestly, like, I, I can't. Like, you, could, I could waste your time and have you put together a plan for me. But, like, we both know I'm not going to do it. And then she was, like, do you use any apps? I'm, like, no. She's, like, honestly, I don't recommend many apps. Um, because, like, I think a lot of them, like, you won't actually use. But I recommend Noom. And I was, like, did you just say Noom.com slash toast? You recommend Noom? She so do we. said Noom. And I was, did like, you tell so her to start telling patients Noom.com slash toast? I was, like, are you kidding me? Like, they was, I, I sounded so obnoxious. I'm, like, they sponsor my podcast. <laughs> but, like, it was so crazy. And it really, like, cemented for me that Noom works. Noom really works. I love Noom. I have a, I'm a goal setter. And, you know, I'm a goal not You're always goal achiever, oriented. but I'm goal oriented. I like to like see my progress. I like to see where where I am and where I'm going. And Noom makes that so easy. I've been uh, w- using Noom since they started working with us on the toast, and like it really makes a huge difference. So it's not a diet; it's a healthy and easy to stick to way of life. No food is considered good, bad, or off limits. They just teach you moderation, and can be used in conjunction with many pre existing popular diets if you want. One of the biggest and most accurate food databases available is Noom, and they let you track your meal habits, visualize portion sizes, and calorie density at a glance. We are all strapped for time. Noom 
game asks you to commit 10 minutes a day just for yourself. You're human. If you go off track, there's no shame. Just tips to help you get back on track tomorrow. Chat with your goal specialist at Noom Community to get and give help to people going through the same things. That's the best part of Noom. It's similar to the toast. It's community-based. Yes. Ugh, we love a community-based app. You don't have to change it all in one day. Small steps to make big progress. Sign up for your trial at noom.com slash toast. N-O-O-M dot com slash toast. What do you have to lose? Visit noom.com slash toast to start your trial today. That's noom.com slash toast. The last weight loss program you'll ever need. Sign on. Feel amazing. Okay. Who's ready for our first story? Big, big news. I I'm am. so excited about it. Um, making travel arrangements now. Oh. Kelly Clarkson announces 2020 Vegas res- residency with epic medley of her famous songs. Kelly Clarkson is about to add another job to her very busy schedule. Las Vegas headliner. The singer announced the news on her talk show, The Kelly Clarkson Show, on Friday, surrounded by a group of showgirls. It's not an April oh. Fool's joke, but it does debut you April 1st at the Zappos Theater at Planet Hollywood Resort. That would seem like an April Fool's joke directed and targeted at me, yeah. like to go all the way to Vegas. Um, and <laughs> I could see that happening to me. Couldn't you see that happening yeah. to me? No, but this, this can't be a joke because it makes so so much sense. I think like the success of Kelly's show really shows how she's really like she's a mix of like middle America gay icon and just like all around pop star. And I think like the success of her show it really indicates like how much of a household name she really is. And like we thought she was before, but like now we know she is. Like the proof is in the pudding. And if anyone deserves a residency, it's her. Agreed. And if anyone is going to anyone's residency, it's me. And like one of my friends is having a bachelor party in Vegas Fun. in twenty twenty. Sam. <gasps> oh, can I come? Can and I so like. Oh, yeah, come. For, I mean, it's not my party to invite people. No, too, no, but, but like, like, we're like in Vegas at the same we'd time. We'd be like adjacent. We're bachelor at adjacent. Yeah, yeah and yeah, I yeah. just want to make sure, like, she schedules in. If it's nap time, like, I'm going to Kelly Clarkson. That <sighs> isn't, that is a must see for me. Yeah. So um, that's really exciting. And I just want to say, like, all you bitches have been sleeping on Kelly Clarkson for years. They have. Um, all this bitch has not been. No. And everything that I love usually, like, gets canceled or it's true. just ends <laughs> or something, at, or the band breaks up. And, like, so for me to see, like, my girl soaring right now. Yeah, it's a good time to be a Kelly Clarkson stan. It's OG. a great time to be a Kelly Clarkson fan, and, like, I just couldn't be happier. I'm happy for you for being happy for her. Also, um, I just, like, would be absolutely remiss if she didn't sing piece by piece and cry like she did on American Idol and make Keith Urban cry. Yeah. Like, I need a holograph, hologram of Keith Urban standing there crying while she's singing piece by piece, like, crying over, like, her absentee father, you know? Right. Oh or, God. like, she needs, like, prosthetic tears for every show. Because, yeah. like, I don't expect her to emote at every show. Yeah. But, um... Piece by piece isn't the same without the tears. Did she by the way, at our show when we went to her concert? Did she do piece by piece? She did. It was a piece by piece tour. But it was before. Oh. It was before that performance. I think. No, that performance well, was a really. Long that time performance, ago. she was like seven months pregnant. Yeah, and like really so couldn't. I not think cry. like she was crying because she was like pregnant and it was just all coming full circle and she was like literally minutes away from delivering a baby. Yeah. Literally. Like if she squatted, the baby would have come but out. But I think when she's just singing it as like a pop anthem on a tour, she like broke it down yeah, for American Yeah, it was an success. So it wasn't as emotional. Fine. Um, I know like we say this all the time, but I do think we should plan a trip around this and go to opening night. Oh, oh my god, god, I would love it. Me and Margo went to opening night Lady Gaga and like I'm not gonna lie, like not to make you feel bad, but it was fucking incredible. It was fucking incredible. And I, I think we should just spend the, like April we'll do 1st. another Vegas weekend and it's surrounded on Kelly Clarkson. I would love to. And I'll I get kicked out of a club again. Yeah, Margo was like a liability in Vegas, honestly. She knows how to ruin your good time because she gets you kicked out of a club. It was one time. Margo literally walked, just pranced into the DJ booth, started pushing some buttons and got us thrown out. Okay. It was one time. And every other time we've been to Vegas, I've been a champ. And honestly, it did work out for the best because we got to, we had to go home super early because everyone was still in the club and me and Margaret got kicked out and we tried to and get back in. And your sister was getting married the next day, so it's time to go home. So our flight was oh, at yeah. noon, but because we got in bed by like 1.30, we actually switched to the 9 a.m. and we got home sooner. You're welcome. Us leaving for Vegas two days before Olivia's wedding to spend the weekend with TPG because he got us tickets to Lady Gaga's opening night might have been one of the craziest, most selfish things we've ever done, but I'd do it again. Most yeah. selfish things we've ever done. Oh my God. But honestly, like, first of all, we got such good pictures from that weekend. Mm-hmm. I feel like our friendship with TPG, like, took a step to the next level where, like, it was family at that point. Yeah. And we have so many memories. You falling face first into the limo. And Olivia could care less. She was so happy for you guys. Yeah, Olivia yeah. actually didn't care. Like, if it was me, she I was be telling so upset. me to go. I could, like, I was going to meet you guys that the, morning. That night. Like, you were texting me at, like, literally 11 o'clock and you're like, get on a 9 a.m. flight and come to Vegas. Because TPG ended up having one more ticket. Yeah. But I wound up not doing it mostly because I didn't have a dress for Olivia's wedding yet and I needed to get them tailored. Um, And also, like, there needed to be a sister. And I was happy to let, like, you guys, like, you guys were selfish and I was selfless in letting you just do your thing. We really appreciate your selflessness because it was rocking time. Yeah, no. And that's how it should be. You only live once and you also only get opportunities like that. Never. You get those opportunities never. And if you ever are getting, like, a cool opportunity, you take it. By the way, I'm going to ask TPG what kind of credit card we need to be eligible for Kelly Clarkson presale. 
Oh, you know, I've been getting all the emails because I'm her number one fan, and yeah. I am eligible. I've been getting pre-sale clothes. Oh, okay, and stuff. because like we gotta. Yeah, but okay. I also need like front row center. Yeah. Great. Lady Gaga had the front, like, five rows be a pit, which, like, we had pit seats, which was cool because it was close. But I fucking hate standing at a concert. I, I like the option to sit. I know. I agree. But TPG loves to stand because he's so much taller than everyone that he literally has a perfect view. So whenever we go to concerts, like, we went to Eurovision together, we stood. He loves to stand. And also, he's a man and, like, has more stamina than me. A hundred percent. Yeah. No. Okay. Next story is really crazy. I saw it on your Instagram last night, and then I saw this in the paper today. I've been following it, and I'm very upset by it, and I'm really feeling... I, was, I couldn't stop talking about it with Ben last night. Well, Kim Kardashian wants to get Rodney Reed off death row. Good. Like, a, like she needs to step in. She has stepped in. Okay. She is tweeting at Governor Abbott. So, um, Rodney Reed is a man who is accused of murder. He is set to be executed on November 20th. He's been in prison for, like, ever, and, like, everyone apparently just, like, knows that he's innocent, and, like, nobody cares. Yeah, and all this evidence has come out to substantiate his innocence, and to all so we like there is a real um what's the word suspect suspect but he's dead right no he's in jail oh, oh yes you're right like the real suspect is in jail for like the Something similar else. atrocities whereas Rodney Reed like had never done anything like this ever and now it's time to take it to Kim Kardashian. So November 20th, that's like so soon. That's and like, so soon. I, I think over a million people have signed a petition, but like, I don't know if petitions do anything. I'm not going to lie. No. Well, the only thing that does anything is Kim Kardashian. So yeah. first she started tweeting at the governor. She said, please, Governor Abbott, how can you execute a man when since his trial, substantial evidence that would exonerate Rodney Reed has come forward and even implicates the other person of interest? I urge you to do the right thing. So I, I the, the governor can. It's um, in someone's hands. Yeah. And the governor can stop this, but I think all, the president can too. So maybe oh. like Kim is just going to the governor first and then out of respect. Out of, but maybe she'll call him the big guns. No, but this is no time for respect. Like just who can get it done? Yeah. It's like, I'm about to just fucking fly down to Texas and go to governor's house and knock on his fucking door. He's not answering anyone. Like no. everyone's tweeting at him. He's acting like he doesn't know his Twitter password. Like, please, we know you know your password. Yeah, no, I'm like, we have to be able to find Governor Abbott. No, no. His daughter is definitely a toaster. Where in the world is Mr. Governor Abbott? Where the fuck are you, bro? Check your fucking Twitter. If, Check your DMs. If Governor Abbott is your dad or your uncle or your cousin or your second cousin. And you um, watch the toast. And you watch the toast. Like, please just tell him to check his Twitter. Um, Kim tweeted at him. Yeah. Also, um... No, I don't want to speak in, like, you know, doomsday kind, kind of terms. But, like, if this does end up happening, like, I will be so upset. Like, if there's a protest, I'm going. Like, I will be really there upset. There are protests right now, um, like, to stop it from happening. What's today's date? November 5th, day before my birthday. Okay, we 15. have 15 days. It's not it's two weeks. And not uh, that's, like, eight business days. But now that Kim knows about it, like, I think it's going to get done. No, I know. I was worried she didn't know. And I, I know. was like, my DMs are open. Like, should I send this to her? Oh, my God. That but then it was like, am I insulting her by thinking she might not know she this? She definitely and, like, knows. I know. Right, and I actually knows. think she tweeted about it, like, a while ago. Yeah. So she knows. Once Kim knows, like, we're, we're, we're chilling. That's a crazy, that's a crazy concept. I know. You know? Like, the criminal justice system hangs in the hands of Kim Kardashian. And, and we're in great hands. And you know what? I'm okay with that. Right. Interessant. Anyways, Hopefully, you know what? I'm very much looking forward to justice being served. Like, we will keep you updated on this story. I really hope that there's a positive update because this is just so abhorrent. Agreed. Next story. We're moving a little quickly today because we have a guest. Yeah. Um, news that I did not see coming after, like, all of Teddy Mellencamp's talks on Watch What Happens Live about how John and Meg love housewives. Meg Ryan and John oh. Mellencamp split after engagement. I Quote, can't believe this. He didn't want to get married again. Meg so, Ryan like, and John Mellencamp have called it quits one year after announcing their plans to wed. Rumors swirled about the pair when the actress was seen without her engagement ring while recently attending the Governor's Award. This one is all about the Governor's. Yeah, right. She was spotted the next morning without the ring while running errands in Los Angeles. I wonder if she saw Governor Abbott at the Governor's Awards. Right, and maybe she whispered something to him and maybe things are happening. Maybe. I guess he didn't want to get married again, the source tells people. He's been married three times before. This is like what we were saying with Cynthia Bailey yesterday. It's like, okay, if you're 25 and the guy you're dating, like, won't commit and doesn't want to get married, like, okay, I understand you leaving. Like, you need to be fulfilled. Like, you need to have kids. You want to get married. You want to have that type of life, that traditional life. Okay. But it's like when you're older and you're, you've been married and your kids are grown, like, when you're getting all fixated on getting married and, like, maybe ruining potentially good situations just because you're so focused on getting married. Like, what's the point? Yeah, I like, don't get I feel it. like if I ever... That can't... That really can't be it. No. If it's just marriage, like... Like, God forbid, a million times, like, I'm never, never gonna get divorced, ever. But, like, let's say I'm 50, I find myself single. Ben dies or something, okay? Or, That's the only way I would be single. And Ben dies. God forbid, not gonna win a million times, cause Shalom. Um... And, you know, I fall in love again. I don't, I'm not gonna care about getting married. Like, I'm just gonna be happy, like, to be happy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 
I t- who was saying that? Dorinda. Dorinda made an yes. excellent point. She said marriage is for the young and with John, like it's just there's really no point in getting married. I really understood that. Me too. I don't know. And now in Holiday in the Wild, I don't want to spoil it for everyone, <laughs> but she finds herself in a very similar situation. Mm, interesting. So, actually, that happens in the first minute of the movie. I saw it in the trailer. Like, her husband, like, leaves her oh, what, so the, sad. the day the kid goes to college. Like, such a cliche. Wow. Literally, totally. He walks out the door, and so does the dad. Yeah. <laughs> bags already packed. Oh, my God. All my bags are packed. Like, is that, such, is that really such a thing where it's like the minute the kid goes to college, Peace. Well, we were just saying how um, we're hearing a lot of stories about, like, people whose parents are getting divorced, like, late, later, later in, life. in life. So I guess maybe it is. It's like the kids are grown. You don't have to do it for the kids anymore. And, like, you just want to Now you want to do it for new. the toast. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> totally. Well, this is actually really sad because I feel like John Mellencamp and Meg Ryan, like, they are fucking endgame for, like, a, a lot of people. Not for me. I don't know these people. But, but Meg but... Ryan is not Teddy's mom, right? No. Who is Teddy's mom? Mrs. Mellencamp. Got it. Okay. One of the first three wives. Yeah, right. But like, it would be like if in 20 years, um, John Mayer and Cameron Diaz got together. Like, that would be so exciting for us. Right. Like, you know? two big stars on their own later in life, like, finding love. That's actually a great comparison. You know? So, I, I, I really was here for this, mm-hmm. but it didn't work out. I hope Teddy's okay. Me too. I know she really liked Meg. I think she was close to Meg. I also think she liked the clout Meg brought to her. Like, she could go on Watch What Happens Live and say, you know, I was talking to Meg, and she said she loves Erica. You know, yeah. like, people like like the clout. Also, I want to talk about um, Watch What Happens Live, because I watched last night the episode with Ashton from Below Deck and Christine Ray and Hilda. Oh, my God. So, first of all, Christine Ray, she was also at the Roast of Alec Ball, when she's very funny. She And she... Is like kind of irrelevant, which makes me sad because she played such an iconic role. And, and Andy asked if she gets um, royalty checks from um, Sabrina. Sabrina, and she said, "Yeah, of course, I give them to my daughter. It's, it was eleven cents last month." Okay, and then she said, "Someone called in was like, what do you think about the new Sabrina reboot?" And she was like, "And what do you think about the new Anne Hilda?" She's like, "I love her. I love this show. I just like need her to stop hashtagging Anne Hilda. Like she's Anne Hilda 2.0, and I'm Anne Hilda. It was very funny. She's super. She's a comedian, so she's very funny. Um, it was a very odd episode, though. Like they were really objectifying, and I don't really believe in like male objectification. Like men can be objectified. Like it's not a thing. Like it's just, it's just not. Um, and they do it all the time on Watch Happens Live. But Ashton, I guess in this week's episode of Below Deck, like did a little strip tease for the guest because I think he used to be a stripper, and they were just like sexualized." him so much and he was so visibly uncomfortable and it was like such an awkward episode that's really really awkward yeah. i'm still not over 11 cents a month because when you think like when someone's the on an iconic show. show you're just like oh they're royalties they're set for life but n- i actually didn't think that about sabrina because i've never seen it aired you only get those royalty checks when, when you get syndicated yeah. and you're playing on other like networks right now it, it doesn't have a time slot but like there was a time when it was always on like replay is it on um like netflix is it on any streaming services i think not no but we should bring it back oh and then they were joking that's why melissa joan hart's in all these hallmark movies right homegirls gotta eat mm-hmm. did you see um last night at the giants game a black cat um Made its way onto the field. Yes. Oh, my God. I was laughing so hard. For those who don't watch sports or give a shit like myself, Ben told me that in the middle of the game, this black cat like, came out of nowhere, nowhere and was obviously so scared. It was actually really sad, but was running around the field and delayed the game because they were trying to get him off the field. And so Andy did it as the mazel of the day. And Christine was like, it's Salem. <laughs> that is so Salem. <laughs> it was such a Salem thing and an Anne Hilda thing to say. It's crazy that, like... I know so much about, like, we used to watch it all the time, but I would never say, like, I'm a Sabrina the Teenage Witch stan. stan. No, but, like, I but definitely I see it every episode. But I am. Yeah. Crazy times. I am what I am. I am what I am, Stan. Okay, next story. Um, I just love talking about these people, and now Caitlin Carter is talking about it herself. She wrote an essay about falling in love with Miley Cyrus. She's For also Elle, very um, chic. a very good writer. Mm-hmm. I've read the first half, and then, you know when you open up a tab on, like, Facebook or something? When you open up a story on Facebook? And then in your you, phone? Yeah, and I just assumed it was on Safari, so I went back to it, but then it was gone. And yeah, by the way, they need to, like, t- I would appreciate it if they took me out of Facebook. Yeah. Or Twitter, that happens. They'll never take you out of Facebook. They will keep you in Facebook until you are dead. They will keep you here until four. Right. But um, so I started reading it enough to know she's a great writer. And this was a really interesting article. Caitlin Carter fell in love with Miley Cyrus in the short time they were a couple. She penned an essay for Elle in which she opened out up and opened up about her ongoing journey to discover her sexuality and said their relationship was the real deal. Quote, this past July, I went on vacation with a female friend. The next thing I knew, I was in love with her. It wasn't quite that simple, of course, but it also wasn't very complicated either. Until that trip, it had never crossed my mind that I was even capable of loving a woman the way I loved her. But after reflecting on my romantic history, I realized I never had a type. So she talks a lot about their romance and um, just like labels in general. And I still ship. I don't know. 
Yeah, I mean. But then Miley unfollowed her. I know, and she unfollowed Liam, and they also put up, like, another weird I, video of them making out yesterday. I feel like Cody stole her phone and unfollowed these people. Cody because definitely seems like a jealous There's no way type. Miley and Caitlyn have bad blood. Oh, also, I wanted to tell you something, and I wanted to get your opinion on something. Speaking of Cody, you know he won the Australian mask Singer. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, I've been spending so much time on my YouTube channel. Um... <laughs> And I watched this video, and it was the title was "The Australian Mass Singer Stole Our Song," and basically there are these YouTubers that have like two hundred thousand subscribers. Their name is like Halogen. It's a boy and a girl, and they're like a music duo. They like create covers and their own music, and they did like a whole like rendition of "Bad Guy" by Billie Eilish, where like they changed the chord progression, and it was much more. It was like a a rock vibe, and apparently someone on the Australian Mass Singer like did "Bad Guy" in the exact same cover that they did which like they basically made themselves like changing all the chords and the octaves um they were like on here talking about how they're gonna sue the mass singer but like is that stealing like a cover you know what i mean is that like stealing someone's harmony oh i don't know yeah we're good because it's already a cover so you're covering the cover yeah and but you're just like copying the way someone covered an original song you know I don't think that's stealing, but I just think when asked, like, you should give credit, but you don't get asked those things. Well, then she did get asked on um, a morning show that they clipped, and she was just like, I, you know, I listened to my daughter's playlist, because it was like, an older woman who did it, and I just, you know, I sang what she likes. Mm. Yeah, interessant. Interessant, but, like, they didn't write the song. Right. I don't know. That's a little too... Heavy. That's out of my pay grade. Yeah. Anyways, Miley and Caitlin just... I just, it came so... Came and went. It came and went. It was, like, so lovely while it lasted. You look like Caitlyn today. I look like Caitlyn today? Oh, because I'm wearing a bun? Yeah, Yeah. and low bun and side part. Oh, my God, thanks. How does everyone feel about my grandma vibes today? I'm into it. It's not grandma. I can see your titties from here. Yeah, it's, like, thotty grandma. Yeah. You're Betty Winkle right now. Oh, totally. The thotty grandma. Totally. Except she doesn't dress like a grandma. That's why she's so... Right. Like, I'm, like, the opposite of Batty Winkle, like right. a young person who dresses like a grandma. Yeah, that's she's a grandma funny. who dresses like a young person. That's hilarious. Hilarious. Anyways, I just thought it would be fun for my birthday energy week. Um, I'm like Maybe. kind of over reporting on like the endless like cycle of Miley Cyrus's like romance. Well, same. I don't report on the stories about like her and Cody like being putting thirsty, up another Instagram. But when we can get some clarity on like the situation that happened this summer via Caitlyn's essay, I do find it interesting. And I'm still holding out hope for like Miley. I'm sorry, Caitlyn. And Brody. Yeah, me too. Me too. But also Miley and Caitlyn. When you're so invested in pop culture and, like, you talk about it so much, stories that once were, like, fiery, like, you start to resent the people. Like, Mm -hmm. even Chloe and Tristan. Like, we talked about that for so long and I was, like, obsessed with it. And then I started to hate them. Black China and Rob. And now it's, like, Miley and her love affairs. Like, I'm starting to hate her. Yeah. That, I think, a lot of people. Not even because of love affairs, but just, like, the way that she's going about things with Cody right now. Well, it's just odd. But it's not, like, it's not my decision to say what what she should do or shouldn't do. I'm just, like, I've had enough. I would like a wellness check, though, on Madison Brown and Liam Hemsworth. I I want to know if they're going strong. Do you see her Halloween costume, Madison Brown? She was Rise and Shine. She posted, like, so many videos. She's so funny. She's so funny. I just really, like, it's so sad because we saw them at a first date. So, like, it very well could have went nowhere and we never would have known about it. But now that we know about it and we're, like, so impassioned about it, like, we need it to, like sustain yeah yeah but i think she's also in atlanta working i'm sure he's working so maybe they're good yeah like but we have to wait till they both get to new york again yeah sustenance you know what they say is key key okay our fifth and final story is some really exciting interesting pertinent biz Biz news and our biz news is brought to you by article Article is the easiest way to make your space look beautiful. Right now, they're all about no fuss entertaining. From loungeable poofs, which is what I have. I have this chic, like, uh, white furry ottoman that Bennett's not, not allowed to sit on. Um, and sectional. So they're from, from loungeable poofs and sectionals to stackable chairs in the event of extra guests, which is my problem tonight. You know, I only have six chairs, but I'm having eight people over for dinner. Thank God for Article. Article is here to make... Is, Article is here to help you make entertaining seasons stress-free and beautiful. Furniture shopping is famously terrible. over your salespeople, poor quality pieces interminable shipping periods that never work that's why article decided to change the way people shop for furniture instead of schlepping to a warehouse to shop for part particle board articles online catalog features high quality pieces that you can browse right at home their team of designers have an eye to on today's trend but focus on timeless design and great quality plus their in-stock items ship in two weeks or less i've never had such an easy time with shipping like i literally got a phone call one day i forgot i'd even placed an order and the guy was like oh i have your article delivery what time will you be home and i was like uh what i literally ordered this a week ago mm-hmm. um they keep their prices low by cutting out the middleman and selling directly to you so no showrooms no salespeople, and no retail markups the website's very easy to use the prices are just surprisingly affordable and i feel like the toasters will just like love article they have been loving it so far they have flash fat rate shipping across the usa and canada starting at just 49 dollars with free basic shipping 
on orders of uh, $999 or above. All in-stock items are delivered in two weeks or less, 30-day return policy with simple returns and exchanges. They're offering our listeners $50 off their first purchase of $100 or more. To claim, visit article.com slash toast, and the account discount will be applied automatically at checkout. That's article.com slash toast to get $50 off your first purchase of $100 or more. Article.com slash toast, $50 off your first purchase of $100 or more. Sign on, get your home together and very easy and affordable Sign and a quick on, way. Become a homemaker. Totally. Okay, this story is just everything, everything to the toast. Microsoft tried a four day work week in Japan. <gasps> Productivity oh. jumped 40%. You just reminded me of something. Oh, you want me to say it now or you want to keep reading? Ooh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'll say it. Um, apparently, there's a guy running for president named Andrew Yang, and I don't think he's very popular, and he's definitely not going to win. And I'm not being political at all, but he is running on the platform of a four-day work week, and I just want to think everyone should think about looking into him, okay? Wow. That is personal. Wow. Thank yeah. you. And this is why. A growing number of smaller companies are adopting a four-day work week. Now, the results of a recent trial at Microsoft could suggest it could work even for the biggest businesses. The company introduced a program this summer in Japan called the Work-Life Choice Challenge, which shut down its offices every Friday in August and gave all employees an extra day off each week. The wow. results were promising. While the amount of time spent at work was cut dramatically, productivity, measured by sales per employee, went up by almost 40% compared to the same period the wow. previous year, the company said in a statement last week. In addition to reducing work hours, managers urged staff to cut down on the time they spent in meetings and responding to emails. They suggested that meetings should last no longer than 30 minutes. Employees were also encouraged to cut down on meetings altogether by using an online messaging app. Well, this is like millenni- the problem with like these millennial companies is that people just like make meetings for the sake of having meetings. And it's like two hours they blocked off to like sit in a conference room and just like pick their noses. And it's like when you have so much time and resources in these like big companies and there's like you just like don't have that much to do so like you waste time and money yeah because you also like just want to look like you're busy yeah as opposed to being busy getting it done and then leaving doing your thing so that when you come back to work you're more refreshed i mean this is just like a really small step in the campaign over here at the morning toast to get the four-day work week up and running um and i just i love it i think it's incredible because we can't have a four-day work week here until you have a four-day work week because we work for you and we are here to entertain you during your work days yeah so yeah we could like say you know what we'll start with ourselves <laughs> but then we're leaving people hanging on right. friday and i feel like the four-day work week won't work unless we're all on the same page because if it like if then it becomes optional they'll be like you know sneaky brown nosers with a hidden agenda like working all day friday making us look bad of like course. And it has to be all or nothing if some of your friends have a four-day work week some have a five and then they're taking three-day weekends and then it's like i'm sorry i can't come till after work it's going to create divides in the friendship and it's right. just going to be tough to like to plan a weekend no and, and then so it's like the group of friends like who work fridays and the group of friends who don't right so we just need to get on the same page about this obviously you know where we stand on this on this pertinent pertinent issue and i think the proof is in the pudding I how think it is too. does one go about making this happen like is it a law i think so like wh- no but i don't think it's a law that we have to work five days a week oh, i guess maybe it would just be every business yeah but, like that's harder like we need uh, just the government to make like a mandate right but then it's like we're living but, in a communist regime yeah where they tell us what days we can work right. and what days we can rest that's a little scary Ugh. yeah so we but don't need a mandate. I'm not it's a lot harder not here for it you know <laughs> no it's but it's tough. like it's it's just I know we're a small company and we only employ like three people, but maybe, just maybe, like we could be, you know, the change, like the chain reaction that starts it all. Like we start and then everyone starts. We could, but, it, or it's, it's a chicken and egg situation because it's like we don't get that day off until everyone else does. Yeah, no, we really need like the Google, Facebook, like, um, Instagram, like the five biggest companies in the world, like all the Silicon Valley. We need them. Yeah. Like, we need Condé Nast, Hearst, like, we need the big companies to all sign a petition that they're all going to do it. Yeah, no, and I think this is, like, a lot of, there's a lot of change in the workplace, you know, longer maternity leaves, paternity leaves. It's It comes from a social force and, and social change. So, we just need to add this to the list. I know, and, like, as I'm thinking about having children, and I realize, like, the five-day work week and the two-day weekend, like, if you're someone who works, like, you really only hang out with your kids twice a week, like, that's terrible. Like, we need... Three and four is such a better balance. And, like, I feel like when someone feels more fulfilled at home, they'll do better at work. Yeah, and then, like, how does this extend to the school week? I think the kids should stay in school. Me too. The kids are just... There should be just, like, one day... The kids are getting dumber and dumber. (laughs) There should be one day a week, though, where the parents don't have to work and the kids are in school. Because it's, like, you don't work, but your kids are... Right, like, you don't work, technically, but then you go home and you have to work on your kids. But, like, there should be a day a week where the kids are in school and the parents ain't working. Yeah, parents ain't working. the unions to change. It's the unions... 
Okay, Margo, you tell him. That's okay. what Hannah Blaise said. Um, before we bring out Jack Vanak, I do need to remind everyone that I am hitting up um, Verona, New York at the... Verona. What, what's Ter- the venue name? Uh, Turning Stones, Turn Those Stones, y'all. Turning Stone Casino in Verona, New York. Tickets are available at girlwithnojob.com. I'll also be in Englewood, New Jersey and Atlantic City, New Jersey. Tickets are also available at girlwithnojob.com. Kansas City's almost sold out, um, but I think you can still get a ticket at girlwithnojob.com. And we're going to Ontario, the Rama, Rama Casino and Resort. So just head over to girlwithnojob.com. Tons of shows. Most of them are sold out, but we got a bunch still available. So I would love to see your faces before the tour is over. But then it would be five days for teachers working. If the kids stay in school. True. <laughs> and also, like, everyone who runs oh, the no, school. I think like, that on that fifth day, we get the substitute teacher thrower in Holly Holiday. Holiday Holiday. <laughs> Shake yeah. things Holiday, up. Holiday, Holiday. <laughs> okay, we're going to go get Jack Manek. If you have a question for her, feel free to comment it on our Instagram or on the live YouTube feed. She's going to be answering all your questions. Lady gang, everything you want to know. Stay tuned. We will be right back with Jack Manek.
We are back with the final and third Lady Gang co-host finally coming on our show, Jack Vanek. Is it Vanek or Vanek? Vanek, but it's fine. Oh, but I like Vanek. Okay, well, it's Vanek now. Okay, yes. yeah, great. I'm excited. We um, like to do that here. Just yeah. pronounce people's names. That's right. fine. And it's, disrespect it's whatever their families. You think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> disrespect their heritage. You know, yeah. it wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> okay. Um, we are very excited to have you here. Thank you so much for coming. Like, such just, you're, I've been following you on Instagram now for a few months, ever since we did, actually, that was only like a month ago, but um, you just live the life. Like, your life is just like colorful. And you sh- post such premium content. Yeah. Like, your life is so Thank colorful. Thank you. Great Jackie, way to describe when it. we were done podcasting, we're in the car coming back from CBS Studios. <laughs> no big deal. And Jackie is like, oh my God, fuck, I forgot to ask her what presets she uses. Um, Well, I bought yours, by the you way. Did? So coming from like the preset queen. She's been like really meaning to ask. I'm so honored. honored to because like, you have great flow. <sighs> Thank you. And it's not like your typical blogger, like a washed out, like orange flow. It's like, your life, colorful. your life in color. I'm just trying to be colorful, you know. It's really good. The what girls, apps do you use? Uh, I use Visco Cam. Well, Snapseed, Visco Cam, you're a good and Visco then a little girl? bit of app, uh, Afterlight Ooh. if it needs it. Ooh, so you're a Visco girl. Um, I've never used Visco. Well, I just figured out what a Visco girl actually is. It's I an had insult. to Google it. I feel really old. I never heard of a hydro flask. I feel really old. Really? Yeah. I still don't understand what it is. It's, it's just a water bottle. It's just a big water bottle. Okay. So it's like hydro flask. Check it. We sell them on our website. No, but Shopmorningtoast.com. Like, no, but that's like a swell bottle. It's a water bottle. No, but a hydro flask is a specific type of water bottle. It's just a brand, and it's just a metal water bottle, basically. Oh, okay. Speaking from I don't the Visco know girl trendy. herself. Yeah, yes, you know exactly. <laughs> Me and a bunch of sixteen-year-olds. So you are. Um, you are here visiting your boyfriend because you said he was doing a show in yes. New York. Boyfriend's a musician. Uh, my entire life I've dated musicians. You're I cannot such like get a, away from like them. a rocker, you know? Like, <laughs> you are. I love it. You know what? It's, I tried to stray away, and then I got pulled back in. I've known my boyfriend for 10 years, and I never thought I'd date a musician again, and then here I am. That's and so that's cute. how you and Kelty met, right? Yes. On we have, tour? We have a mutual ex-boyfriend. You mean groupies? <laughs> um, maybe. <laughs> Honestly, sounds fun. Yeah. The well, way I, Kelty described it, it sounded like a dream. Yeah. It's so fun. I mean, it's it's mm, it's kind of grueling. Like you stay in a tour bus with ten other guys. Yeah. Everybody's smelly. Everybody's farting. Yeah. You just have to like be one of the guys, but it's fun. Yeah. I love it, and it's just kind of in my DNA. Like I said, I can't get away from it. So we got so many questions for you because so you're now with your boyfriend on tour, but you went on tour. The Warped Tour. The Warped Tour, baby. We got so many questions about it. And like I was reading it and I was like having FOMO because I don't know what it is and I need to know. <laughs> Have you ever been to it? No. Okay. So it's like a traveling punk rock music tour that started in the 90s and it just ended now, like last year. Um, but you travel the entire country and Canada for two months straight. Mm-hmm. I was there selling my merchandise so I'd have a little pop-up tent, oh, little Jack Vanek bracelets and stuff. We, we love need to a talk bracelet. about the bracelets because I meant to bring this up when we saw you in LA. But I used to have your bracelets like and I have pictures yes. like I literally used to like the skinnier I got I wore them like higher up on my arm you know that was like goals <laughs> did you have the Gleek one no I had the you made a Gleek one oh I my God, sure I'm did so upset. I, I made money off of Becca Toe. you have one <laughs> made money off of Becca <laughs> do you have any left uh, the Gleek ones I have no idea maybe oh, if I find one, one it's on yours eBay. okay thank you I had the glam one and uh, it was so yes. glam oh yeah would you ever bring them Your back jersey. I feel like you could do lady gang bracelets yeah well I'm kind of very jersey I made it for some Jersey boutique, and it yes. was just all the Jersey ladies that were buying it. And, and Jackie. And Jackie. Um, so I'm kind of, like, waiting for the bad trend to come back around. It's been, yeah. like, a little bit over 10 years, so I'm just waiting for it like to happen. Like, bangle season. I have, like, 20,000 of, 20, of them left in a warehouse. No way. So I'm, like, you know, just waiting to make that money. I feel, like, I feel like it's time it swings back around now. It does. Like, Every bad trend comes back. Scrunchies. Hello? Scrunchies. Yeah. Uh, that's all I wear. Yeah, me too. Oh. I mean, I, they never left <gasps> for me. That's cute. Cute. They Thank never you. left for me either, but remember that scene in Sex in the City? Oh, where she tried scrunchies. to ruin scrunchies? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> scrunchies. <laughs> That's what she said. Oh, scrunchies. <laughs> She's so annoying. Oh, my God. So you'd be like, ah, oh, bracelets. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Just waiting. So, host of The Lady Gang, but you also host a uh, crime, true crime podcast. Yes, true crime podcast called The First Degree. We talk about murder. It is so different from The Lady Gang. No, Could like, not be, totally. like, more different worlds. Yeah. But true crime's kind of like my passion project, and I just, I love it for some reason. So speaking of true crime, do you agree that Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself? Oh, obviously. Oh, I mean, we've been question. sharing the memes. Yes, we yeah. have. We've been sh- it's I, so crazy. I love a conspiracy theory. I've fallen down the Reddit rabbit hole. I'm like, give it to me, inject it in my veins. But don't you feel like, thi- like calling it a conspiracy theory Theory is just like insulting. insulting. Oh, it's not. Yeah, because it's not a conspiracy theory. The conspiracy theory <laughs> is, is that, that he committed suicide. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, 100%. is it a conspiracy theory if it's true? No, if it's like, if it's just so obvious, and it's like, 
if the majority of people believe this one thing and like everybody clearly does, yeah. then it's not a conspiracy. Then it's just like the narrative. Yeah. Well, it's the government trying to cover some right. shit up. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so wait, what is your favorite conspiracy theory? Like what is one you will, what is the hill you will die on? Like it is fucking true. Ooh. Mine is that Beyonce didn't give birth to Blue Ivy. Like she 100% had a surrogate. And okay, she was wearing a I like fake that belly. one. Like there's, you cannot change my mind. Okay, here's the, this is a really random one, but that Chuck E. Cheese reuses their pizza slices. <laughs> oh, like if someone didn't eat it, then they'll put it, that's there, like, there is a whole, Wait, whole I need to look world this you guys need to go down. They where do, you, use, where so, do you find the information on this? I mean, so Shane Dawson did a really good <gasps> Done. documentary on it. and But it's basically like if somebody doesn't finish their pizza, they take all the unused pizza slices and put them into a new pizza because their slices never match up. Oh there's like half God. a pepperoni on this slice oh and God. then not on the next slice. <laughs> that, that's totally true. They that's go to totally they go to Chuck E. Cheese. They bring a camera. They're like, we're the only adults with a bunch of kids. We look like creeps. Oh my God. And they're filming the whole process. And I don't know if they ever came to a conclusion or not. That's <gasps> sickening. Yeah. Well, wait, speaking of Shane Dawson, there were so many comments on your picture saying that you know Jeffree Star and like, you don't know, like you were sitting next to two of his biggest fans like in the world. He's um, the best. From the MySpace days, right? Yeah. So I used to hang out with him in high school when he used to I'm work sure. at Mac. Oh my god, I'm sure. Back in the day, because we're both from Orange County, and mm-hmm. we're both in the music scene. He grew up in the Warped Tour world, too. Oh, did he? He used he used to do, like, music. Beauty yeah. killer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we used to hang out all the time. There was this thing called Scene Queens, and it was sure, me sure. and a couple other girls, and basically Jeffrey, who were, like, the rulers of the scene world. Oh my god, I wish I was, like, popping back in those days. What a fun time. The original influencers. Totally. Well, it's crazy, because... Back on like MySpace days, everybody's like, "Who cares about a big following? What are you right. gonna do with it?" And now it's any what anybody wants. I know. And he is the best example of somebody that has done it freaking perfectly. Can you believe like where he's at? The Shane Dawson Did thing. Did you watch like, the series? He makes twenty million dollars on a palette. Oh it's my God. crazy! When he, when he turned the calculator around and it said twenty eight million dollars, like I was gonna die, like literally throw up. No, I'm like I thought that you were missing a couple zeros. Right. Like this this is insane. 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 You need to get him on the Lady Gang. I yeah. know. I know. I haven't I haven't seen him in so long. He's just been like killing, you know, it. doing his thing. But yeah. he'd be perfect. He'd be perfect. And this is what I do like about that documentary is he is such a good friend and he's such a yep. good kind-hearted person lots of controversy yeah however he had always been such a good friend to me so i love that you're seeing the human side of him on and i love that you say that because that's how like as a stan i'm like i know he's definitely like a good nice person even though i have no proof of that yeah so now you're just confirming it you're like in my heart i know um you're also on lady gang tour you guys have been doing shows all around yes how is that going similar to warp tour uh, <laughs> same amount of drinking. <laughs> right, right. Uh, it's good. We did seven shows over the summer. Fun. I mean, Kelsey has a full time job, so we had to like right. work it around her job. Uh, we did East Coast, Texas, and then West Coast. They're amazing. Yeah. I mean, you guys know it's so, so cool to like actually meet your listeners and have that connection with people because you're used to just doing this in a room with nobody around. Right. right. And you're like, is anyone really listening? <laughs> no. You're like, am I making up my numbers? No. Right. No. It's like the numbers are there, but it's like. No one's there. Yeah. yeah. You know? We're yeah. talking to ourselves in here. But can you believe, though, like, how much of a, a following and, like, almost like a cult vibe Lady Gang has taken on? Like, we're it's always, cr- like, shook. It's crazy. I mean, I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, we started a long time ago. You did. We've been doing this for four years. I barely knew what a podcast was when we started it. People still don't know what a podcast is. <laughs> oh, I know. Uh, <laughs> but, like, back in the day, it was, like, it's so crazy. So it's cool to, you know, s- girls have grown with us. Yeah. It's yeah. The same thing with my brand. It's I started my brand when I was... 19 years old so to have people grow with you when they started as these little twerpy scene kids and now everybody is you know these awesome powerful women Mm -hmm. it's it's cool well we talk about this a lot on the show and i would love to get your opinion on what you think of the trend of like celebrities now like infiltrating the podcast space like Dak shepherd conan o'brien like and now conan o'brien being the cover of variety magazine saying that he's the face of podcasting like you just started a podcast yeah no it's like have you ever met joe rogan or like the lady gang um so i would love to hear your thoughts on this like celebrity like infiltrating our our space well we had a conversation about this when we were in la where it's like it's not (laughs) i don't remember anything i don't think we filmed it though oh i think it was after but but we're we need like two different sections of podcasts. We need yes. right. nobody's that started podcasts, and then there needs to be a celebrity podcast section because we can't be compared to Dax Shepard. That's we, not fair. We can't be compared to the girls from the office, okay? Yeah. Jenna no. Fisher. Well, like no. obviously your podcast is number one. You guys are freaking celebrities. Totally. Totally. We need just two charts just so we can like see where we are against like our own our like people on our level. Yeah. Um, can I take some questions from Instagram? We got yeah. we got so many questions about your Instagram. Okay. How do you always manage to find the best rooftop bar and day drinking bar in every damn city? You know. I it's just what I do. <laughs> I really I really do I love traveling mm-hmm. and I love planning 
like my whole entire trip out. So that's just what my like little passiony thing is in my free time. So I spend a lot of hours researching it. Oh, that's good. Um, okay, this is such a funny question. Fuck Mary Kill. Okay. Blink 182, Sum 41, or Simple Plan? This is like a question my Ooh. husband would die for. He just went to a Sum 41 concert and was moshing, okay? Okay, well, I'd kill Sum 41. <laughs> Okay. Um, what was the first one? Blink-182 Blink or Simple Plan? <sighs> I'd marry Blink-182 because they have the most money. And then I guess smart. I'd fuck Simple Plan because their singer was kind of hot. Pretty smart. Pretty no. good. Blink-182, though. If you had to That's pick one, this is from the MJ Essentials. If you had to pick one, First Degree or Lady Gang? Ooh, pick one? I mean, Lady Gang's my OG. Yeah, yeah totally. What's been your favorite episode of First Degree? Well, we did a whole series on OJ. We had Kim Goldman on. Oh my god, I'm sure oh we always god. talk about Ron Sister. Goldman. Justice for Ron Goldman. We were just talking about Dude, it yesterday. It's insane because she has her whole podcast about confronting OJ. She just wants to talk to him, and it is so fucked up. Oh my, oh my god, god. His I'm lawyer, sure. all this shit. So it was really cool to have her perspective on it because she is the whole premise of our podcast is to tell stories one degree away from the murderer or the incident oh. or the victim. So she is the ultimate first degree. I mean, she's been connected to it totally. her entire life. She's wow. there. I know. And That's so crazy. In your professional opinion, who do you think killed John Bonet? Oh, good question. <sighs> See, it's like, I always side towards the brother, but I also don't know if I've been given biased information. Right. Because yeah. everybody watched the documentary and they ended up getting sued because it was basically like slander in his right. name. And in your professional opinion, do you think Amanda Knox That's did it? That was my next question because we were talking about her last week. <sighs> she for sure did it. God, see, I don't know. I don't think so. Why. You know what I they didn't talk about? Either. And I didn't even watch the documentary, but I know that they didn't really stress enough how like going abroad can like, make people insane. Yeah. And like, well, maybe also she like the in... Italian whole justice system is so, so fucked up. Right. And like, they didn't really harp on the fact that like going abroad like makes people crazy. Like they get this like sense of liberation that they've never had before. And, like, yeah. It, someone, it, like it's so freeing, like you could murder someone. Well, <laughs> So I you just, just think you can do anything. Right, like you're yeah. in a foreign country. Like, I don't know anyone. Nobody knows me here. If I could do it, no one's going to come like find I'm me. I'm invincible. I'll just yeah. go back home. Yeah. It's like if you get a parking ticket out of state. You're like, right. this is fine. I, right. I don't have to pay it. No or one's like a rental for me. car. No, my thing with that is she was acting so weird, like right after it happened. But you don't know how people are going to act in like weird situations like right. that, that they're like judging her actions. Right. And maybe she was just a weird girl. Yeah. She Well, she seems like a weird girl. She did. Regardless. She also tried to crowdsource, crowdsource her wedding. Ooh. I'm shook. Now she has a column in a, in a Seattle newspaper. That's, that's all weird yeah it's that her weird. husband owns it's she always weird when like true crime people end up becoming celebrities it's yes. disgusting i'm like you were convicted of murder and now you're an influencer yep <laughs> yeah that's, it's that's also like on the a flip side though like elizabeth smart like does instagram ads I, you know well i love elizabeth so smart. do I. she is so I, I follow her on instagram but that is weird that she does ads yeah <laughs> because she's famous she's a, like a a famous kidnappy, you know, but like <laughs> she survived that. She should fucking self advocate fun boxes, you know. She's, a, I mean, it's the least that somebody could do for it's her. The least society she is could do. Traumatized for in her her entire life. Totally. Um, okay, this question is from Bitta Chakran. Oh. Um, how did you and your boyfriend meet? So I met him on the Warp Tour. It's how everything in my life has basically started is on the Warp Tour. That's so crazy. Ten years ago, uh, we met. We had this incredible like initial connection it was like a soulmatey kind of thing mm -hmm. he had a girlfriend Shook. so we stayed friends but he had feelings for me so we had to we're like towing the line of what was appropriate what was appropriate and what wasn't and his feelings for me were too strong that we had to kind of like cut off our friendship mm -hmm. for a while lost touch and then recently reconnected like a year and a half ago that's so cute yeah that's um, really cute i have a random oh. question you've seen a star is born i'm assuming i have do you feel you haven't no. what oh you guys i haven't seen a movie in like five years Oh my god, that's what so do you crazy do all because day? the main guy is <laughs> name, to podcast, his right. name is Jackson Maine and like it's so similar to your boyfriend's name and like they're both like rock stars and I just oh, feel Jared. like it might be oh. based on him a little bit. That's an interesting. And they, they kind of have a same like vibe. Oh just, yeah, like they play stagecoachy. Like yeah, yeah you you're right. Watch them. Well, I can't I'm, believe you haven't seen the movie. Okay, number one, I was at Stagecoach when they filmed that scene. So were we of Bradley Cooper. No, we were. Yes. We, I thought okay, we were. I don't yes. know. Yes. Oh, like, I guess we didn't know we were being filmed. Yeah. Well, no, no we, were, we were at we were at Coachella when they did Lady Gaga. She used some of her Coachella set. I don't know. I don't know. Well, Bradley Cooper was playing on the side of I think it was Willie Nelson. Oh. oh. And we're like, what the fuck is going on here? Because he's like at the side of the stage, but then they're filming the crowd right. like it's his. But Willie Nelson was really. Oh, that's hilarious. Hilarious. We were definitely not there for no, that. But that's we awesome. Go to Willie Nelson. But I am trying to get Jared into country music. I'm like, oh dude, God. this is where it's at. It doesn't matter. You can be so old. Yep. You can lose your hair. Mm -hmm. You can be gross, and people will still love oh, you. Oh, to make him into a country music star. Oh, yeah. oh my well, God. I also love country music. I know. So I'm like, and get me into the show. And you would love to be dating a country music. 
music star. Obviously. That sounds yeah. awesome. We'll see you on the CMA Awards Red Carpet. We'll yes. be interviewing oh, you the two of you. No, no but oh. I'm saying like once she... One day. Yeah. yeah. One day. I'll be one, once the transition I'll be one of those complete. country wives. Sweet and salty. What is your best career advice that you would give to a young professional? Ooh. Um, so I think this kind of comes from starting my brand. Mm-hmm. I made so many mistakes because I tried to like jump ahead of myself and take too big of steps. So my probably best piece of advice is baby steps. Yeah. Don't get ahead of yourself. It's okay to move at a slow pace because slow and steady really does win the race. Mm-hmm. That's great advice. You don't want to yeah, you don't want to, you know, skyrocket into success because you'll probably crash and burn just as fast. By the way, that's such great advice for that problem we had last week. Well, I had remember when I called you I was really sad. Oh, yeah, that is that is good. Can you it's talk about advice. it? Yeah, I'll tell you after. Okay. Um, um, I have a question for you because yes. you're so many people's style icon. Uh, thank you. And like have been for years just that your evolution of style. Who is your style icon? Uh, Dorit. <gasps> wow, Great that's such a answer. good answer. She is so chic. So chic. Because I have this thing where I'm like, when do I have to stop wearing crop tops? I'm 32 Never. years old. Never. But I'm like, she rocks it, is so amazing, and is aging so, well, she doesn't age, right. but is aging gracefully. so gracefully. That's such a that's good an answer. She's amazing. Answer. And she also is the most stunning person in real life. Oh, totally. Oh, my God. Um, okay, this is our final question from Lil Hazers 3. This is so funny. Have you ever made up a story on Good Week, Bad Week? <laughs> it's hard to keep coming oh, up with stuff. all the time. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I've also stolen so many other, like, of my friends, if something happens, good. I'm like, okay, how do I rework this to happen to me? Yeah. When you're, when you're like, scr- scrambling the, for the b- bottom of the barrel for content every week, like, sometimes you just gotta get creative well also sometimes we batch record episodes because we're traveling or Kelsey is working so I'm like well four completely crazy things didn't happen this week but we also like use stuff from the past that is hilarious I'm still in a few things one thing I want to end on what is your good week bad week this week oh good question um well here's a good bad week my boyfriend actually left this morning he's going to Mm. Boston and he like wanted to get like a little quickie in before I left (laughs) So he comes out of the bathroom, you know, with no shirt on, just underwear, but he's wearing his last pair of underwear because they can't ever do laundry Laundry. on tour. And it's a pair of old whitey tidies and he comes in bed and I'm like, you look like a baby. Yeah, I can't have sex with you. (laughs) I'm like, I can't do that. I'm not Jeffrey Epstein. He's like, oh, fuck. And he's like, man, I guess this works on David Beckham, but not me because he's like a stocky dude. Yeah. Like, not the most in shape, but I kind (laughs) of like it because he's just like a big guy. Yeah, I'm a chubby chaser. Yeah, and I'm like, this, I'm like, this is not working, dude. I'm like, you look like a big baby. (laughs) That's so funny. How did they do laundry on tour? This would stress me out. No, totally. You just got to keep buying new Hanes. I mean, he wore the same shirt for four days, but the thing is, he doesn't, I I think I was on you guys, he doesn't smell. It's he has no. Oh yeah, sense. I did say that. You did say no that. bo whatsoever. And I'm like, I also don't know if it's me just like liking his pheromones or not. Yeah, but he never smells. So it's thank also God. different for boys. Like for girls, like you really cannot wear the same pair of underwear for more than 24 hours. Like but no. with a guy, it's like you could literally wear the same pair of underwear for a week. It's like shorts. I can wear yeah. the same shorts for a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're, loose fitting. They're shorts. not having like vagina <laughs> issues Juices like we are all the time. Yes. Totally. No, it's a whole different ballpark. Um, thank you so much for coming. If you want more Jack Vanek, Vanek, sorry, um, <laughs> yes. hit her up on Instagram J A C V A N E K. You can also hear her on the Lady Gang podcast and your True Pri- True Crime podcast. Which is called the first degree. The first, oh, great name! Thank you. Um, obviously available iTunes, Spotify. You can find it charting in the store um, any day of the week. We uh, love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow for my final episode as I head off to Morocco. Yes, I'm such a traveling uh, cosmopolitan bitch. And my um, birthday. Thank oh, you. Oh, right. Sorry. It's also Jackie's birthday tomorrow, so feel free to send her wishes and Venmo. No, I'm kidding. Do not Venmo her. Please don't. Um, don't. I At totally Jack take Manic. that back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. 